On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we've got a typhoon in Asia. We've got a hurricane along the Gulf Coast. We've got shipping stocks soaring. We've got shipping companies blank sailing. We've got shipping companies capping their rates. We have a ship with Evergreen written on the side heading for the Suez Canal. And most shocking of all, we may be running out of coffee. On this, what the ship is going on here? All right, that's a lot of stuff coming at you, and we're going to break that down piece by piece here. So I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. I'm the chair of the History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science Department at Campbell University, former Merchant Mariner, and an adjunct instructor of maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. And holy cow, there's a lot of ship going on here. So let's break this down. Number one, Typhoon Shantou is sitting there off the coast of China. Now, this typhoon, which was a super typhoon, which is the best meteorological term I can think of, initially had been heading south of Taiwan. It was going to go in between Hong Kong and Ningbao, but instead it took a hard turn to the north. It came up the eastern side of Taiwan, and now it is literally sitting there off Shanghai, off Ningbao, and just going to be planting itself here. His story from G-Captain, one from Maritime Executive, but when you start to look at this, here is the map uh, from AccuWeather of the track. You see it right here. It was north of the Philippines. It was supposed to go this way. Then all of a sudden, it took this massive turn. And if we zoom in here, let's see if I can get myself zoomed in there a little bit for you. And we'll take a look at it here. And what you'll see is this track line. It is just sitting here. It's just not moving. It's just kind of just came in here, went to the northeast. Now it went to the southeast and still going a little bit southeast. And it's just kind of just looming right here. Uh, I had somebody on Twitter uh, talk about sailing through this area the other day and talking about how rough it is out there. It is just rough as anything. You see right there, sustained winds, 52 miles an hour. Uh, You've got um, uh, wind gusts of 63 miles an hour. It's down to a tropical storm. It's no longer a typhoon, but still it's lingering right there off the port. If you look at marine traffic, you can see it right here, that black hole that's sitting right here off Shanghai. You can see it right there. This is this is where it's sitting right here. And so ships have got to either sit tight in port or divert around it. You look up here in the Yellow Sea, look at all the vessels that are just jammed up here in the Yellow Sea waiting for this typhoon to clear out. If you go into the port of Shanghai and Ningbao, right here in the major anchorage right here, in the lee of, of Ningbao, you see it right here. Just a massive anchorage right here. I mean, the number of ships that are just piled in here is crazy. And this is obviously going to have a butterfly effect because one of the things we're going to see is this going to disrupt loading. It's going to disrupt sailings. It's going to disrupt schedules. You would think this would be a actually a positive thing. It'll allow ports to catch up in Felix Stowe on the West Coast of the United States and Europe. But in truth, this is not going to be enough of a diversion. It's just going to cause more backlog going on at the same time that Chantu is, is ripping itself apart across uh, uh, the South of uh, East China Sea, excuse me, over in the Gulf of Mexico, we have another storm that's coming in. Now the Gulf was already reeling from hurricane Ida. Here's the story from G captain talking about the Gulf of Mexico oil still hurting from hurricane Ida. But now we, we have a, the storm coming. Oops, sorry, it was a load storm. Here we go. We're seeing the second one. Nicholas come in now, had been in a hurricane, uh, downgraded now back down to a, a, a tropical storm. But it's coming in, dumping massive amounts of rain on Texas and more importantly, on Louisiana. And this is closed down the uh, uh, Port of Houston. Uh, Port of Houston has closed its terminals. The, uh, uh, the Houston Ship Channel is closed right now, meaning there's no traffic going in and out. Houston Ship Channel is a very narrow channel. It's a long channel, too. And more importantly, uh, the winds would be coming right across this channel. And it, it's just too narrow to take these chances for ships to get stuck. And so Houston's shutting down. This means oil facilities, terminals, containers, everything in that area had been shut down. When Ida came ashore, it hit southern Louisiana. And so we saw, like, for example, the Colonial Pipeline come right back up and running. It was being supplied by oil out of Texas, even though we had shutdowns along the Gulf Coast of Louisiana. But now we're seeing shutdowns in Texas, and this thing is heading to Louisiana. And Louisiana has not recovered from Ida. The main power lines are still down. They're still trying to get grain ships out of the Mississippi. Uh, This is just going to add to the issues that we see going on here. And so two major storms, uh, 
Typhoon Shantou, which is now a tropical storm, and then Hurricane Nicholas, which is now also a tropical storm, both hitting both ends, really, of, of the, shipping, uh, the shipping pipeline, one in East Asia, one on the south coast of Mexico. Now, uh, excuse me, south coast of the United States along the Gulf of Mexico. Now, you think that would be enough. That should be enough for any shipping story right there. The, the two major storms, massive disruptions, but no, they're, they're, there's more. And so here we see this story about, again, the continuing number of ships off the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach. Uh, L.A. and Long Beach are just having record numbers off there. Uh, it's just amazing. Marine Traffic did a, a graphic on Twitter the other day showing the main shipping channels coming in. And, and one of the things that was really interesting about the main shipping channels going into L.A. Long Beach is how long that anchorage is going down the coast and how many ships. There are about a dozen ships that couldn't fit in the anchorage. They're just milling around off the coast, just slow steaming, dead steaming, just 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 waiting to come in so they can get an anchorage. And I had somebody ask me the other day about, you know, the port of Portland, you know, seems empty. Why, why aren't we using the port of Portland? Well, Portland actually only has really two berths for container ships at Terminal 6. Uh, only half their cranes got about eight cranes. Only half of them can handle what's called post Panamax ships, which are kind of the medium sized container ships. Uh, and, you know, only handling two ships is a long sea voyage up the Columbia River. A lot of these big ships don't want to go up that voyage. They don't want to do it. It's too long. And so they're going to keep coming into L.A. Long Beach. The problem you have on the West Coast of the United States is L.A. Long Beach are it. I mean, they're really it. Uh, Los, An uh, Los Angeles and Long Beach are the major terminals. They have rail, road, and the population's there. San Francisco lost out when, when the Naval Air Station Alameda shut down. They should have bought that, converted that into a container terminal, and they would have been rivaling L.A. Long Beach, but they did not. And that's a big loss for them. And, and you can see it right now. So we've got this record number of ships. Now we have record stocks. Shipping stocks are through the roof. Greg Miller over at Freightways uh, um, did this story. And Greg's just doing this on purpose now. Now he's just, he's just rubbing my face in the fact that I did not buy stocks in all the shipping firms at the beginning of the year. And, and, and I'm convinced this is the reason that Greg's writing these stories. Because he's just graphically demonstrating how much money I could have had and I don't. And you see that right here in the dry bulk stock performance. So here are the dry bulk. Here's all the major lines. If you know, I have, I have Google Finance on my phone, so I track all these things. I have all these these in here, so I can see where they're going. And one of the things you see is that steady uptick since uh, the end of uh, uh, fall of 2020, going up. Uh, what's not on this performance chart I should show you is 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 prior to March of 2020 when everything went down quite a bit. So there was a big downturn, obviously with the outbreak of COVID. Uh, so you got dry bulk container stocks, just absolutely uh, insane right here. You can see all the major ones here, uh, uh, all the major stock players right there. You see them all. Zim, which is the newest one out there, uh, just absolutely just uh, amazing performance out there. You can see all of them uh, uh, tracking right here. And then tanker stock. Tankers has is, is been the interesting one. A lot going on with the tanker industry. I got I to do a few more videos on this because it's really interesting about the tanker industry. They, they're facing several issues right now, uh, obsolescence of the fleet. So they got to have a big replacement program in the fleet right now. They were at a, a max uh, during COVID where, where they were just you know early on here. Again, just before this chart right here, actually when, when COVID hit, they went through the roof because oil production was in full force. And then all of a sudden consumption went down and they had to store everything. And they've been reeling ever since. And so the tanker market is now back on, on a, uh, kind of an uptick. We'll have to wait and see on that one, how tanker does. But Greg, again, just, just again, rubbing my face into it, convinced of that, by the way. Then over here, Greg also talking about the fact that the container sector is hot for ships these days. Again, Mercogliano Shipping coming to you soon. $200,000 a day, $200,000 a day to lease a vessel. To lease a vessel, it, it, that rate is 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 un, it, it's insane. A twelve year old container ship for three months, three months, ninety days, ninety days at two hundred thousand dollars a day. You realize you've paid for that vessel over above what it's worth. Everything else you're making is profit. A four thousand two hundred and fifty TEU vessel, and that's what you're getting it for. It it, it it's an insane amount of money right now. It's it, it's 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 crazy absolutely crazy and uh those who have container ships especially those non-container carriers 
uh, C-SPAN uh, and, and uh, freight o- uh, owners like that are, are going to make a lot of money right now. They're going to make a lot of money right now leasing their vessels out to the major carriers. And what they're going to try to do is lock in some long rates. They're going to make great money on the short-term rates, but long-term rates, if they can lock in at, 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 at good rates, is, is, is cash in, in, in the bank for them. And so they're gonna make money on these short terms, but the long term is what they're gonna be looking for. And a lot of container liners are gonna be looking for that. We come over here to this story, the domino effect of port congestion. This is an interesting story. This is the CEO of uh, Singapore's, uh, I forget the name of the company he represents, uh, Inves One, and addressing uh, David Yao, talking about that uh, butterfly effect here. And, and, And again, here's somebody who's in the industry right now talking about it. And one of the things he's really advocating here is the use of artificial intelligence and computers in scheduling vessels, tracking vessels. It, it, you've got to get it out of the hands of humans. It's just f- too fast. There's too many moving parts. It, it's too much. You've got to start applying more artificial intelligence, more, more computers to this to do it, which obviously in, I will tell you, in the maritime industry raises a lot of concerns because of previous cyber attacks. Uh, everything from not Pietia virus back in 2017 with Maersk to the most recent uh, attacks last year on, on, on MSC, on CGM, on the IMO, on Costco. Uh, all of these have that potential. And so this is a great uh, article. Splash 24-7 puts this out here and really recommend reading this because here's somebody from the industry. Now, how, how are the container operators reacting to this? So, all right, how are they reacting to it? So one of the first things you have here is this story uh, from uh, G Captain through Lodestar. 2M blank sailings taking angry shippers by surprise. So 2M is the biggest shipping alliance there is. It's Maersk and Mediterranean Shipping Company. They're the biggest. I mean, the two biggest hands down. They're, they're the biggest. They, got rep- they represent over about 35% of the world shipping. And one of the things they're doing is what's called blank sailing, which basically means they're canceling sales. They, they, they are basically going to start canceling some vessels. So Maersk and MSC canceled four scheduled Asia, North Europe loops in week 39 and 40. So uh, shipping services break the year up into weeks, and then there are set routes they go on. So according to an MSC advisory, the 2M will avoid the Griffin AE 55 loop. Again, these, these, these are scheduled routes with stops on it and Lion AE6 uh, service in the last week of September, followed by Albatross AE5 and Lion AE6. So those are their routes, and I could pull them up, but, but basically it's an Asia to Europe route with a series of stops on it. And what they're, what 2M and MSC are arguing is like, look, we're, we're, we're loading ships, they're jam-packed, uh, they're going to go to an anchorage and wait to get in, and they're just it's just going to cause more backup. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the sailings, and that'll alleviate some of the ships going to ports and allow us to catch up. The problem with that is those containers that need to go are just piling up in the docks then. It's really not alleviating anything. And both MSC and Maris, by the way, have not announced caps to their shipping rates. So one of the things that shippers are saying, uh, uh, again, this weird terminology here, you know, the people who have cargo are shippers. Those who haul the shipper, uh, haul the containers are carriers. So 2M and MSC are carriers. Uh, what the shippers are saying, those who've got the cargo saying is you're just doing this to inflate rights. You're just, you're just doing this to make more money. You're just going to make more money down the road. You want to see an escalation in, in rates. And that is the argument with that. At the same time that this is going on, that 2M and uh, that Maersk and MSC are doing this, you have CMA, uh, CGM, and also Hophog, by the way, uh, are capping their rates. They're basically sitting there saying, you know what? We care. We, we care. We're a big, huge, multi-international company, CMA, CGM, which is, which is uh, French, and then Hophog, which is German. You know, hey, we care. We care about you. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock our rates in. We're going to lock our rates in through February. And this, uh, as it says right here, was a surprise to many. Many people were shocked about it. Now, I should mention, they're locking their rates in at the highest the rates have ever been. So a lot of people are like, well, that's kind of disingenuous. You're you're locking in rates at at, at a highest level it's ever been. And it's not like you're floating the rates. It's not like if the rates come down, you're going to lower them. You're going to keep them locked in there. And one of the reasons they really want to lock in these rates is because they want to book future cargo at those rates, too. They're hoping to get people to start scheduling their rates. What they're thinking, and it's a smart move, again, by 
CMA and, and Hop Hog here is what they're hoping is they're going to book cargo out long in advance, get these long contracts out there, and they're going to lock them in at these huge rates. And other companies that are spot rating, basically flowing with the market, should the should summer, spring and summer uh, 22 roll around and all of a sudden there's excess capacity now, everything gets caught up before the summer, before the, the holiday season 2022, they're going to make a lot of money. And so that's that's the that's the movement uh, that's out there. That's the movement that's out there, and that's what you see here in this story. And I think this is a, a yeah, Greg, Greg did this story too. So okay, so we got this. We've got these reactions to it. There's the, the there's all these reactions to it. You see the reaction to uh, this, and this story goes in Sam Chambers over at uh, Splash Twenty Four Seven writes about these reactions uh, to it. But then uh, there's a few other stories there that we, we should be aware of. So meanwhile, back in the United States, pressure continues on the Biden administration to do something regarding this situation. Uh, again, American exports are sitting there on the dock. They're not being moved. Uh, we're seeing the biggest export coming out of L.A. Long Beach to quote Gene Soroka, the head of the port of Los Angeles, is air because the containers are empty. And so there's more and more pressure being mounted. This story in Freight Waves talks about exports ratchet pressure on Biden to take on shipping challenges. And they created this, this 24 member panel. Uh, I did not get a call, by the way. Uh, again, my, 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 I'm standing by the phone all the time waiting for you, uh, but no call. Uh, but anyway, they put this 24 member panel together to advise the FMC. Well, let me advise the FMC. Tell carriers using American ports, they have to give American exporters trips or you can't use the port anymore. It's that simple. I mean, I don't know why this is such a tough thing. Now, there's efforts to make this change. There's there's the, the new Shipping Act of 2021. Uh, Representative uh, Garamendi from California, a Democrat, and Representative Johnson from South Dakota are pushing this through. It's sitting there in Congress. I'm sure we'll have dozens and dozens of hearings and briefings about it. And eventually we'll pass some law that will be in effect way after this is done. But again, that's lingering. And then you have this story, Sam Chambers, American Retail Association demands liner change. And again, it's kind of a very similar story. Uh, Sam kind of puts this in here and everything. But the quote I love, the quote I love is here from uh, my, my favorite entity in the world, the World Shipping Council, the World Shipping Council, which is the Washington, D.C. liner lobbying group. Uh, and and this, is, this is the entity that has basically represents all the major shipping firms out there. And so this is their lobby group in D.C. And, and again, the World Shipping Council, again, I, I just I don't know why the name makes me laugh every time I say it, but it does because it sounds like an evil organization. But they have argued, and it says here in the same story, that normalized demand, not regulation, will solve the supply chain woes that have been double shippers all year. So the, according to the World Shipping uh, Council, it's not us. It's you. That's right. You consumers out there, you just demand too much stuff. And it's your fault that the situation is the way it is, which is a unique argument, I have to say, because I'm going to I'm really going to save this story because I want to use this story later on when shipping goes down and they're screaming and, 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 and you know, demanding things. I'm going to come back with this story and sit there and say, you know what? You said it was our fault. Now, whose fault is it? This is, again, don't begrudge capitalism. Again, make as much money as you can, as, as, as you want. But at the same time, you have to be able to sit there and say, wait a minute now, whose fault is this? What, what's going on here? You're prioritizing empty containers going back to Asia because you want to load them with more stuff to bring them back. You can just as easily take empty containers, slow down the process a bit and normalize it and get us back in track. I mean, actually, if they slow down the return process and if those containers are taking a little bit longer to load in China, that would slow everything down a bit. That would normalize this a bit. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying it's you consumers, you Americans, you Europeans, you, you know, buying everything. You're the reason for all this problems. So again, great story by Sam Chambers. Absolutely. Just, just enjoy this. And as if the world doesn't have enough news at the same time, a big green ship with evergreen written on the side is heading back to the Suez. Not 
ever given ever given is heading into the shipyard in china right now uh for repairs matter of fact just just found out uh somebody i know is gonna be working on it so hopefully we'll get some great information on damage done to her but ever ace part of the new a class of evergreen uh, ships these are the biggest ones they've run these are actually the biggest container ships in the world right now at over twenty four thousand boxes uh, she had just arrived in Felixstowe, and she's going to be going on a return route back. Uh, and her and her sister ships are all going to be coming online this year. We're going to see them coming in. Uh, big ships are on the way out. 24, 25,000 box ships on their way out. And Ever Ace will be heading back. She's already gone through the Suez once. I'm sure she was well watched all the time. I think all the ultra large container vessels are well watched now going through the Suez Canal. There was a little incident a few days ago where a ship touched briefly and caused panic, but uh, got off very quickly. So everybody's heading for the canal. In the meantime, this is the story that what in the wide, wide world of shipping is going on here? We may be running out of coffee, people. Coffee. I, I don't know what I'm going to do without this. Uh, this. This could be the problem that eventually caps everything. Christmas, one thing. Medical supplies, another thing. Peloton bikes, that's important. But coffee, seriously? Shipping problems plague Brazil's coffee exports. Uh, if we don't have coffee people the world's going to come to a crashing crashing stop and this all goes to every commodity in the world so you know if 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 you know i already have a closet full of toilet paper and paper towels i think i may need a closet full of coffee now based on this uh just gonna may need to stock up on that i can do i can actually do without everything else but the coffee is going to be hard people so really need to focus on this and and just one last story right here because i just saw it come out now but uh gcab uh posted this came across shanghai and ningbao starts re uh ports uh, start reopening so we're going to start seeing the ports reopening however that lingering storm off the coast is going to slow things down. I have to tell you, you're not going to be able to fast speed through here. This is going to cause diversions and slow things down. So oh, even though Shanghai and Ningbao are opening back up, it, it's still going to have a, a impact on the supply net. So what the ship's going on, uh, this is an amazing day. Tuesday, September 14th, uh, there's a lot going on. That was my recap for the week going on where it goes from here i have no idea every, every time i think i started a little youtube channel to talk about a ship stuck in the suez and see where i am now with this it, it's just amazing so if you enjoy this video and i can't understand how you would ever enjoy this video because it's nothing but bad news please uh, uh subscribe to the channel go ahead uh hit the bells to be alerted about new videos to let you know what other things you're going to be running short of in the near future uh, please share it to cause panic among consumers around the world. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, if there, there's some contingency I left out, which is probably many, uh, let me know. And if you've got questions, I always try to field as many of them as I can. I apologize. I, I really try to do as, as many as I can, but this, is, <laughs> this has gotten bigger than I thought. So until our next episode and our next uh, crisis in what the ship is going on here, uh, the Sal signing off.